Lovely step. Beautiful play by this man. He's gone straight through. Good stage there. He's got to run his family gap. And look at that. Look at that. Magic and he's on his way. And he might score. Twice he was in the mall and then he came into the back line and it was Jonathan Davis and he's chased by Terry Light who seems to lose his footing, takes him, but here it comes, crawl, crawl, crawl and try. January 1989, Jonathan Davis, the Welsh international outside half and captain, signs for the Witness Rugby League Club. Well, basically I've seen Jonathan play his first game for Wales some years ago, obviously, and uh, I thought then what a good player he was. And you tend to monitor good players' careers. And I thought at the time he was getting messed about a bit by Wales. I thought it was every time this lad's going to turn, it will be now. And I thought he'll make a big splash. He'll be self financing, as it proved our first home game. 14,000 against Salford. And um, just got on me in the car and went. And Davis is coming on, and Thackeray is going off. So, Davis now making his debut. You know, there was pressure on, on the people to drop uh, certain players and uh, maybe to, you know, to please the press, they would have dropped myself and the, uh, myself because I was uh, the standoff and, and captain. So I wasn't going to give them um, the pleasure of doing that. Um, so I decided to... Um, and to join the professional ranks uh, there and then. So, Jonathan Davis, probably the most gifted rugby player of his generation, a player openly acknowledged as standing alongside the all-time great Welsh players, turns from hero to villain. But this is only one story in Jonathan's turbulent career, a story that starts in Trimsarran, a small mining village in Wales, and sees Jonathan making headlines, sporting or otherwise, all over the world. But none of the publicity, the media attention and hype, none of this would have occurred without Jonathan's outstanding ability with the rugby ball, evident to the discerning eye, even in a very small boy. Even at that age, he had this innate talent and he would play the game instinctively. And he had great time, great confidence, and he would always produce the unexpected. Dicey, from the Swansea Club. Oh, lovely work here. It's that man, Davis, again. Beautiful try. The Welsh have uh, worried New Zealand with their footwork and improvisation. Referee plays advantage. And is this Davis's fourth try? Sure is. I, I remember being very impressed with him because of his... Uh, um... Uh, his little cheek, I suppose, and taking quick dropouts and always looking for, for, for a gap. And uh, John, Jonathan went to the same school as I'd gone to previously as well. And so obviously I knew of him for, uh, through PE masters and, and, and teachers who spoke obviously very, very highly of this young lad who was, who was coming up and would be uh, very soon knocking me out of the Welsh team. Brilliant play by Malcolm Dacey. Davis! You can put on your glasses. He's Davis again. Gets away from Cox. He is absolutely dynamic, Jonathan Davis. One of the things that Wales uh, do miss at the, at the present time is uh, somebody who's got that confidence at outside half and, and somebody with, with that injection of pace and with the authority that he, that he used to play uh, the game in Wales. Obviously, I think from a personal point of view, you know, I, was, I was very, very disappointed to see him sign for witness, but at the same token then, obviously I was very pleased for, for himself and his family that he was securing his, his future, and uh, I had no doubts in my mind that, uh, that he would uh, prove a success at Rugby League. Knowing Jonathan, as I know, that uh, whatever he sets out to do, he will always make a success of it. Not a line tries to get that ball away. Fox brings it round. The ball going loose, Jonathan Davis. Races all the halfway. Chris Bibb is after him, but he won't catch Jonathan Davis. 
Coloto runs onto the ball. That was a great ball from Holiday. Gets it out to Tate, and Davis is in at the corner. Well, Wait him, just dropped the ball, put it by Kurt Sonnenson. Out to Jonathan Davis, comes inside. Davis scores. Of course, he's got blistering pace, but he certainly, uh, you mustn't give him a yard. Because when he does get him brought and play, he's, he's probably as lethal a player as I've ever seen. Sonnenson coming through, having a big game. Kurt Sonnenson throws the ball. It's a beautiful ball to Jiffy. Jonathan Davis sidesteps the fullback. He's going under the post. What a tremendous try. And it's made again by that man, Sorensen, who's having a real big game at the moment. In the meantime, it's Myla and Jonathan Davis is going to get his second hat stick in two games. Davis just goes for the sticks. Richardson can't catch him. That's another superb score under the sticks. The second hat stick in successive weeks for Jonathan Davis. Well, this is Trimsara, really. It's um, situated, um, as you can see, a couple of miles away from the coast, uh, you know, between the two towns of um, Llanelli and Carmarthen and South West Wales. This is where I was born, and uh, these are the playing fields where I, uh, you know, kicked the ball about and played cricket um, and everything when I was younger, yes. Jonathan was born on the 24th of October 1962, but actually next door where my mum lived. Uh, we went there for the birth, and then we moved here next door when Caroline was born, about two years later. Len played rugby for Llangennych, uh, Swansea, Llanelli, and then he came to Trimsaren. He was captain for a couple of years. I can't remember him actually playing with us, you know. We always uh, kicked the ball back and forth to each other. Um, you know, he did encourage us uh, just to enjoy ourselves. Um, you know, but he always came along and watched or, you know, most of the time he was just complaining about the state of his front garden because uh, there was hardly any grass left during the summer months. It was just uh, mud, dried mud. Yeah, that's when I got older and I started playing for, you know, um, the school and uh, on the local district side. He said, no matter how uh, good you are, how bad you are, Make sure that uh, you, you look the part, and uh, you always used to ensure that uh, I clean my boots, or he cleaned my boots, or um, you know that I have to have uh, tie-ups to hold my socks up. So he was pretty keen on that. He was just an ordinary boy. He was my son, just my son to me. But um, as he grew older, from the age of about six on, uh, after he went to school, he just sort of had the gift. I think you know people t told me he was good. But he was just my son. I used to worry about him on the field, that's all, you know. I still do, actually. Well, his uh, sports teacher at school uh, sent his mother a letter when he was eight years of age to ask if it was possible for, for him to be allowed to play for the school team and 11s, because he showed a lot of promise, you know, when he was practising out on the field with the boys, older boys. And uh, she had to give her consent because he was playing much with the much older boys himself, and he was such a tiny boy. So it was a risk to have him on the field, you know, it was, it was so small. Well, I came out to this very pitch here uh, as a new member of staff at the school, and I saw this little lad uh, carrying a huge rugby ball, and I, I wondered what he was doing here with all these big lads around him. But he picked up the ball and he, he could glide through them and score a try with great confidence. And I, I thought, well, he is going to be a, a, a star of the future. and, I, and he's, come as no surprise at all that he's one of the uh, world's best players at this time. From Trimsaran Primary, Jonathan naturally progressed into local youth rugby. This is where I made my debut for Trimsaran Youth and uh, Trimsaran First Team. And, um, you know, but before that time, um, I was... Uh, bit of a nuisance uh, as a ball boy really chasing the ball and uh, going away with the first team so um, you know it brings back fond memories but before playing for the youth side Jonathan won a place at Gwendreth Grammar School a school famous for producing great outside halves when I was at the school uh, you know there were only uh, photographs on the wall and uh, heroes of mine so you didn't really think that um, you know, you, you never get to that uh, height, of, you know, in, in your career. 
Um, but when you left uh, and, I, and I started playing for Neath, um, everybody started saying, oh, he's from the Gwent, right, you know. And there's a, a great line of fly halves uh, from Carwin James, um, Barry John, Gareth Davis, and uh, they were starting to mention my name. So, um, you know, there was a little bit of pressure because once uh, you'd played for Wales, um, they always uh, compared you with uh, the other great outside halves who uh, did come from the Gwenrith. But uh, when I was at the Gwenrith, it was just purely for, you know, playing for the fun of the game and uh, there was no pressure on me at all. The only thing was I was very small at that particular time, so I had to be pretty quick uh, to get away from the big lads. But I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, although we, you know, we didn't win many games, um, it was purely for enjoyment, and uh, you know, it, it went it went on from there. Then. In 1976, while Jonathan was at Gwendreth, Len, his father, died of cancer. Jonathan was 14 years old. Yeah, when he was in um, Adam Brooks Hospital, you know, he's, he had a liver transplant. Um, it was one of those things that. Uh, he was in a situation where, you know, we might, every time we used to visit him, uh, it might have been the last time we'd have seen him alive. So uh, on one occasion, I remember him telling my mum that uh, two things he'd, he'd like is, uh, to do before he passed away was, one was to uh, give my sister away when she was married, and the other one was to see me play at the uh, Cardiff Arms Park. Unfortunately, um, you know, he died and uh, he did neither. But, um, you know, my sister's married now, and I've actually run out on the arms park a few times. So uh, I think he'd be proud of, uh, of both of us. Breaking into top rugby in Wales is notoriously difficult. Jonathan, like any other aspiring player, had to prove himself in the hard school of first-team rugby with Trim Saron. Then at 18, he thought he had his chance. Uh, first came to Slesley as a, a young 18-year-old, you know, hopeful um, after a trial, and uh, you know this great place to play, um, Strathy Park, uh, and I wanted to, you know, make the squad. But unfortunately, they thought I was too small, um, so I went back and played for Trimsaran, and then went to Neath for a couple of uh, seasons. But you know, as a, a Slesley Trimsaran lad, I always wanted to come back and play here, and I did so um, a couple of years later. <laughs> Uh, after being turned down from Llanelli, you know, and uh, as well as not playing for the Welsh schools or Welsh youth, uh, I thought that was it, that's the end of my uh, ambitions. But um, luckily enough, later on that season, I've been playing well with Trim Saran, and I had a phone call from uh, Ken Davis from Neath, uh, who asked me if I wanted to play on uh, on the following Tuesday against Pont de Prix at home. Um, I remember that I was the 13th out of half that season that Neath had tried out, so you know, I thought, why not, I give it a try. You have one chance in lifetime, so I thought, might as well take it. And uh, I was rather nervous about it. I remember going up, but Ken was driving, and uh, we were all pretty nervous in the car. But um, you know, my knees stopped uh, shaking about five to seven, five minutes before kick-off, and I went on and everything went OK. They were looking desperately for an out half at that time in Neath. And the committee had been speaking to Phil Bennett the previous Saturday, and uh, he told them that there's a good prospect in Tums Haran in Jonathan Davis, which he thought would make the grade and even make it to the top. My first uh, seven aside tournament for um, for Neath, and we were doing pretty well. And uh, but unfortunately, in the semi final, 
I tore my knee ligaments, which uh, kept me out of the game for uh, about 14 months, uh, which was a horrendous injury, really, you know, especially uh, at 18 years of age. So, um, you know, I just had a great um, surgeon, Mr. Malwin Griffiths from Kamar then. Uh, you know, he told me to take my time. He said that the, the knee was, a, you know, it was a successful operation. So just to carry on training and come back when... Uh, when he and I decided that the time was right. I told Cara, you know, that's, I think uh, sometimes uh, that's why we got married, because I couldn't play any rugby that particular time. We, we had a weekend off, but, uh, yeah, I had a few um, downers during that particular period, uh, thinking that I, I might not play again, or, you know, maybe my ambitions in uh, to play for Wales were, had been crushed. But I came back, uh, the knee felt pretty stable, and, um, you know, I just uh, gave it my best shot. fortunate ones to play uh, alongside Jonathan. We were the same age together in school. Um, in Gwendraith, through to Trim Saran, up to Neath. He took me under his wing up in Neath, and uh, he's one of these players where you can tell he's going to go on to better things, and you're just lucky to play alongside such a player. But um, you get these players every now and again where you can tell it's just uh, natural ability in them. The, uh, the hard thing for us is we have to work hard and train hard. And uh, players like Jonathan, they can drink as much as they like, they can do whatever they like, but their natural ability is still there. It's in their blood. The winger stayed out, so uh, I decided to throw it down me for a change. <laughs> and uh, we just put my head back in and go for it. And luckily enough, I just made it. The uh, second one I can't remember much about, really. Uh, so all I remember was uh, I called uh, a couple of scissor moves and uh, they just come up too quick. And, well, they were past me before I uh, went to the second of me, I think. Jonathan's greatest influence at Neath was, naturally, the coach, Brian Thomas. What does Jonathan think he learned from Brian? First two things, uh, attitude maybe, and, um, you know, how to handle people on and off the pitch. And, um, you know, he's done well in life. Uh, he's a very clever man and... Uh, you know, I listened intently to what uh, whatever advice he gave me. He just told me to get on with it, but uh, make sure I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> so, no, he was happy with my performance, I feel, and uh, we had quite a great relationship. Two feelings I remember is one was uh, the phone call I had on a Sunday morning prior to the international from um, Sir Rod Morgan saying that I'd been selected to play against England. You know, that was a fantastic feeling. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that. And um, the general build-up throughout the week, you know, um, was fantastic because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was rather nervous uh, the first couple of days, um, you know, Monday, Tuesday. But after that, uh, I thought, why not? You know, if I'm good enough, I wouldn't have been here. So I decided to relax a bit and... Uh, you know, thoroughly enjoy the occasion. And um, the thing I remember then on, on that particular Saturday was, the, you know, the noise um, as I ran out from uh, under the stand, you know, and turned around, look at my, my parents up uh, up in their seats in the stand. And I, I remember I had to stop singing the national anthem because I, I had a lump in my throat. They came onto the field just to have their photographs taken, you know? And I saw him in his red jersey with his white shorts, and he still looked a little bit small. And I thought, well, I just couldn't stop crying. And my brother came from behind, Graham, and we were all crying, every one of us. You know, it was very emotional. The try, I remember, it was at a particularly important stage of the match because, um, you know, we were 
it's very the scores are very close at that particular time, if not the uh, drawing. And um, I remember getting the ball from Teddy Holmes from a scrum and I kicked it, I put it up and under up. And unfortunately, it was a bit of a disaster of a kick. But I thought, try and make up for the mistake, I better chase the ball because the ball had gone too far and um, the full back should have caught it behind his own line and uh, that had been the end of it. But fortunately for me, unfortunately for um, the English full back, Chris Martin, he managed to. Um, fumble and drop the ball and I was there to uh, happily dive on it. <laughs> I remember coming back the next day and um, Came back into the club, and uh, they had the match on the on the television, and you know they were playing. We are the champions on the on the record deck there. So uh, I, I remember it quite vividly, you know, uh, entering the place. But um, it's rather the, um, I was a bit inebriated when I left. In 1987, Jonathan left Neath to join Clonethley. Yeah, a couple of good names, you know, uh, Gary Pierce, uh, Phil Bennett, uh, Barry John, Gary Davis have all been there. So, uh, you know, um, looking forward to it, really. If I, you know, do as well as them, I'd be very pleased. Ironically, Jonathan's first big game for his new side was against his old club, Neath. Yeah, the Shrubs Cup final against Neath was a, a bit of a grudge match, really, because I just left uh, Neath the previous season after being captain there for uh, two seasons. Um, you know, it was a big match, a uh, capacity crowd. It was like an international. Um, you know, I was really, really relaxed about it and uh, thoroughly enjoying the occasion. But about 10 minutes before, um, you know, before kick-off, uh, a card came in with uh, my name on it. So I opened it up and it was uh, my photograph with an in, uh, with a noose around my neck, um, with RIP on the front, and all the Neath side had, uh, had signed it. So, um, you know, I took that uh, to heart a little bit, and, uh, you know, I was a, a bit disgusted by it. But, um, you know, it just spurred me on then, and I went on to win man of the match and uh, stuffed it down their throats, which, uh, you know, was a fantastic feeling. While Jonathan was enjoying his club rugby with Clonethley, there was, unfortunately, trouble ahead. Yeah, and, um, it was one of those things that, um, you know, I'd been to a, a funeral that particular day and uh, I, I came back. I was, Karen was pregnant as well, uh, expecting a, a son, Scott. And um, I had a phone call to say that she wanted me home, that she wasn't feeling very well. so. I decided, um, you know, to get the car keys. I thought uh, I couldn't get a taxi anyway. Um, to jump in the car and uh, to go home as quick as I can. Unfortunately, um, you know, uh, I, I crashed the car into a lamp post, uh, and I had a, a meal on the side of the on, on the passenger seat. And uh, of course, people put two and two together and get five. Uh, they said I was actually eating the the meal as I was driving home, but that's uh, totally wrong, you know. Um, I just crashed the car, and uh, purely because of uh, under the influence of drink, which I regret to say, you know, um, I should never have done. And, and 
you know, I, 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 I don't condone um, drinking and driving at all. It's, uh, you know, I was punished for it and I'd never do it again. I think it's one of those things that uh, the pressures of the game got to me, um, coming from a small community. Um, all of a sudden, I was, uh, you know, everybody that I was the person that everybody wanted to invite out or, you know, get to open their fates or promote some product. And uh, I, th I think everything happened too quick and I uh, couldn't say no. And I, you know, I was, I was expect, um, accepting every invitation. So, you know, I was hardly ever in the house and, um, you know, kind of myself just drifted apart and, uh, Things happen, um, you know, things happen so quickly, uh, you know, it, it was rather difficult to control, really. So um, it was one of these things that uh, the press get hold of, uh, and it was, you know, in, in, the, in the media the next day. And uh, But happily, me and Karen uh, were back together, expecting our, uh, expecting our first child. And um, if anything, you know, it strengthened uh, our relationship. In 1988, Wales won the Triple Crown, playing rugby that was typified by this famous try against Scotland at the Arms Park. narrowly missed the Grand Slam though, losing at home to France by one point. Yeah, it's very disappointing that we played uh, great rugby um, during our Triple Crown win and, um, you know, we're pretty confident uh, of beating France at home, but um, the weather was against us that day and the French were very, very funny side to play against. Um, they're very difficult to beat and they take their chances very, very well. And um, that was the story of the game. We didn't create many chances purely because of, uh, I think, the, the weather more than anything. It was a, uh, a dreadful day. And the French took their chances. And um, at the end of that, we lost by one point, which was a, a great disappointment for, uh, for the side. But because we'd come, uh, become such great, such great friends that particular year, we weren't really bothered. Um, we'd, you know, if, we pleased most of the people that had watched us. We'd played attractive rugby. Uh, we'd won the Triple Crown. And, um, you know, we were happy with that. And uh, we looked forward to the, you know, the following season. But um, things happened uh, during the summer and, and the off-season. Um, the coaches were, you know, were sacked. And uh, some of the players went north. Some of the players, uh, you know, finished from injury. So that side never played again. So, you know, we have fond memories of it. That summer, the Welsh team toured New Zealand. Jonathan Davis there, going for a drop of goal. And it's there. So, Jonathan Davis's magic works once again then. Over the Hawks Bay posts, quick delivery to Jonathan Davis. Goes for the gap. The I felt that uh, the tour was the happened at, at the wrong time. Uh, we weren't ready um, as a side to go over New Zealand. They were current world champions. And uh, at that particular time, we're playing the best rugby I'd ever seen in my life. Um, I think I felt that we were lambs to the slaughter, really. Um, you know, if you look back on the history of uh, the Great 70 side, they never toured New Zealand during that period when they were in their heyday. So, um, you know, we should have taken a, a leaf out of their book and maybe gone to um, Canada, America or Japan even. Um, you know, built a, a better... Uh, team spirit up and a better playing relationship and then waited for the All Blacks and the World Champions to come over to our uh, our country. But um, the administrators and all their wisdom uh, decided against that so we had to go to New Zealand and um, we just weren't good enough. Um, and what, you know, whatever side in, in the British Isles or, or France, if they'd have gone, they would have had the same treatment. I felt that a lot of boys um, didn't do justice to themselves out there, but, uh, you know, 
I played to my best ability and uh, you know I played every game uh, as if it was my last for Wales, even if it was captain or not captain. Um, it's a fantastic honour, you know, to represent your country and you know a great honour to be to be made captain of it. Back inside, in fact, to Jonathan Davis. Oh, by word, Jonathan Davis going for the posts. Overhead by right, but getting there. When the All Blacks were pressing, it looked dangerous for Wales. Ring was in though there. He did well in the first place. David Young drove on, and for once, Wales adopting All Black tactics. Ring looking a little indecisive to start with, but then he opens it up. Jonathan Davis. Mason up Despite the result of the test matches, Jonathan, relatively speaking, emerged with honour from the tour. He was voted the man of the match in the second test and scored this famous consolation try. But as captain, worse was to follow. Um, we didn't play well on that against the Romanians. Uh, our forwards didn't dominate. Our backs, you know, didn't create enough chances. Um, you know, they kicked very well um, out of the hand and and place kicking, and I think they uh, deservedly won the game. But, uh, I had no confidence in uh, the administrators or selectors at that particular time. Uh, they were very very inconsistent. Um, you know. The, I was disillusioned with the, you know, with the total setup, um, and then you know after that uh, dreadful time against Romania, nobody came to say, you know, to sit down and discuss what happened, or you know, took me into their conference to say what was going to happen in the future. It was really um, a pathetic situation to be involved in as can, as as the national side and captain of the national uh, of the national side. So um, I suppose my guard was down uh, a little bit. Um, Dougie Lott and the witness coach. Saw that, saw that, and uh, he made the offer there and then. I, th I think Jonathan was very disillusioned with the Welsh setup. Uh, there were there were, there were rumours that he was actually going to be dropped from the Welsh team, uh, that he was going to be stripped of his captain, captaincy certainly. And uh, you you can't blame him. Uh, you know, a young man with a young family, uh, rugby being an amateur game, um, perhaps he wasn't uh, firmly in, in any kind of profession. So who knows what the future holds? Uh, especially perhaps in, a, in in South Wales, which you know has lost lost its base of uh, uh, industrial base. Ball going loose and Mackenzie counter attacks for witness. Mackenzie gets over halfway. A long pass to Jonathan Davis. What a marvellous pass from Phil Mackenzie. It's a try. Witness with a late chance here. A long ball to Jonathan Davis. And the Welshman will score his second try of the afternoon. Mackenzie now trying to open the play up. David Yu. Short ball to Richie Ayres. Now a longer pass to Jonathan Davis. He steps outside of his opposing centre. Back to Korea, to Tony Myler. Witness keeping the ball alive. Davis, he's looking for the gap. Now he decides to. Well, beautiful move by Jonathan Davis. Side step round. Three Warrington players. The cover tackle is coming in. He's tackling just short of the line. As referee gives the it was try. A massive step for me to take. Where I was, I'd taken ten years to, uh, you know, prove myself and. Um, to become accepted as an international player in Wales, um, and then giving it all up to be a novice in in the professional game, uh, to be put on a pedestal, to be knocked down. Um, so I just had confidence in my own ability, um, and I was I was pleased that what confidence uh, Dougie Lawton, you know, cap, ex captain of Witness, ex captain of Great Britain. Um, showed uh, in, in buying me. Yeah, the first match against Salford was, um, you know, amazing, really. Um, it had been a, a very nerve-wracking 11 days building up to my debut. Um, I just couldn't believe the, the coverage I had uh, from the national worldwide newspapers, um, the television, the radio, you know, um, special feature, feature writers. It was just incredible. and. Uh, I don't think um, Witness uh, could believe it as well. You know the players. Uh, Dougie Lawton uh, told me that if you'd have known it had been this much uh, media coverage, you might not have bought me. But um, you know, I was just glad to get it over with. Um, just get the first debut, my, my first game over with, because I think half of the press were there to see me fail. You know, to see um, if I'd have gone there and maybe got injured and got carried off. But. Uh, you know, I saw the game through, um, 
And, uh, you know, I, I lost uh, about half a stone in weight, you know, the previous week, just worrying about, uh, you know, the particular game. But uh, I came through it um, for the last 20 minutes. <coughs> and uh, it's gone well ever since. Kearns, a long run out. And Davis goes in the first tackle, and the ball's been knocked on and thrown into touch. Keeping the ball moving, there's an overlap now. He can get it out. Cut on to Davis, gets his first touch. Davis having a run, and he's beaten one beautifully. Davis going for the line, puts a kick inside, and the cover is there. But that was a good run by Davis, and the ball's gone into touch. But the crowd likes that. And there's a break on him, he can get the ball out, comes on to Davis. Davis with a run. Being taken and skull dragged and swung down. A game that will be noted for Jonathan Davis's debut and not get his money as easy as that very often. Yeah, I was signed, you know, without uh, a medical, and uh, when I came, yes, uh, I went into the physio and they told me to strip off. And then they told me to strip, put my clothes back on. <laughs> no, they, they told me, uh, you know, just have a medical. They looked at me and uh, they said that I had one leg shorter than the other. Uh, I was asthmatic. And um, what's the other thing? Oh, they had either curvature of the spine, which is a bit of a spina bifida, they say. So my explanation was that uh, one leg uh, shorter than the other meant there was a natural side step. And the curvature of the spine was uh, that... Uh, you know, I was um, more of a balanced runner than a swerve, natural swerve. So, uh, you know, they took it in jest and a bit sorry for me, you know, when I went on the pitch. Throws a ball back to Davis. Over the first few games, Davis Jonathan was slowly introduced into a talented witness side. But now firmly established, is it possible to compare the two codes? It's hard to compare, but the, the, ch the general standard week in, week out is um, far harder and far higher um, to sustain, you know, whereas um, a league game is like an international game, um, you know, which you play 30 of a year, 30, maybe 40. In, uh, in Union, you'd only have uh, maybe 10 hard games. So um, over the season, it's uh, a lot harder and a lot faster. You know, any to uh, top rugby player, whether Union or league, uh, given time and with the right attitude, could jump from uh, from either code. But uh, you know the first couple of weeks are very very difficult, and um, you know uh, injuries plays a, a big part in it as well. You know I was lucky to stay injury free, and uh, had a great run. Uh, you know to get uh, used to the game, whereas a lot of players have been injured in the first. Uh, for his first games and uh, they've taken a hell of a, a long time to uh, get used to the game and some have never made it. Jonathan Davis set that one up from nothing. Because of his versatility, Jonathan was at first regarded as a utility back. What does he consider now his best position? I prefer to play centre, um, you know, in the league purely because I've played most of my games there. But I enjoy playing full back and I enjoy playing uh, uh, stand off, so it doesn't really worry me. Uh, it did worry me at the start of my career, my uh, versatility did, because, um, you know, on the big occasions, um, you know, if everybody was fit, maybe I would lose out. But, uh, you know, I've, um, I've made one place my own now, and if I need to be moved, it's purely to strengthen the, the all-round side. ...to Jonathan Davis, and Davis scores himself, sidesteps inside, superb side for Jonathan Davis. And it's the last tackle for the... Jonathan has been quoted as saying that Widnes are probably the best side he has played for. That's right, you know, it's the best football inside, the best rugby side um, I, I have ever played in. You know, the strength all round and, and the pace are, are quite incredible. And, um, you know, a number of that side would uh, get into any um, rugby international side. Widnes speed, Widnes take. And again, it's being spun out, it's Tate using these acres of room, and Jonathan Davis... In, the, in my union days, the best players uh, were the, the Triple Crown winning side. And, um, you know, in my league days, um, it's, it's got to be Widners and Great Britain. Um, you know, Widners, I, I wouldn't like to single anybody out um, in the in the Widners side because they're great, all great players. Um, but then, you know, it's a bonus to play for Great Britain and play with the likes of Gary Schofield 
uh, Andy Gregory and Ellery Hanley. Already in a relatively short career, Jonathan has been involved in some major rugby league occasions. For instance, a World Club Championship game against the Canberra Raiders. Yeah, that was a fantastic occasion to be involved in, you know, the Australian champions versus uh, the British champions. And, uh, you know, I think uh, the two sides on that particular day were two football inside. Um, you know, it was just a fantastic game to be involved with and uh, for witness uh, the right result. You know, it was important for us to score on that uh, particular stage because it was just after half time. And uh, that's all I remember, I was going for the corner. Um, Laurie Daly came across and I just stepped him. Uh, so I, I stepped inside of him and uh, he just put his arm out, which, you know, um, any player would do. It's, it's instinct, really, when you're beaten, uh, you just put your arm out. But uh, he's about 15 stone, and I'm uh, 12 stone, you know, soaking wet. So um, he caught me in the, you know, a head high tackle, and I flipped over. You know, I didn't really uh, think of the, the smack, really. I just uh, thought I had to score outside to put the uh, witness in front. And uh, when I did score, and eventually came round, uh, you know, it's, uh, one of the boys decided to have a go at Laurie, and Laurie's in the sin bin. So uh, it was a turning point uh, for the game. and. Um, a turning point in my career because I felt uh, a lot of people thought that I couldn't take the knocks uh, of rugby league and uh, that um, you know for, showed a lot of people that uh, I had what it took to, to play rugby league. You've had some great moments haven't you in the game particularly when you went home to the valleys and scored three tries in the charity shield in Swansea. Yes uh, you know we're gonna win this again and you know we're, I think we're at this particular stage uh, you know those two other glamour clubs and uh, to go down to Swansea um, and play in front of my home crowd, you know, was a fantastic experience for me. Uh, rather nerve-wracking, uh, you know, because they all came down to see how well, you know, John Dever and myself were doing. And uh, to score three tries and win the Charity Field in front of those, you know, people, it's a fantastic uh, experience for me. You know, all my family was there, all my friends were there, and uh, all the Welsh uh, media were there. and. Uh, what gave me greatest pleasure was the fact that I got up them and proved to a lot of people in Wales that I uh, doubted my, you know, um, ability to play rugby league. Um, was was to go back and prove to them that uh, I'd made a success of it. And another thing was to uh, to bring home to the Welsh public what a great game, what a hard game rugby league was. Yeah, it was great for me because you know I scored a hat trick of tries and won man of the match there. And uh, you know people were saying uh, John Devereux also scored a try and. Uh, what people are saying, like, the Welsh team wouldn't be in that position if, uh, you know, all the boys that have gone rugby league would have uh, actually stayed in rugby union. And four tries in the match against Bradford Northern, was that your best display in a witness jersey? I think scoring-wise, yes, you know, I enjoyed that particular game, uh, especially against Bradford, uh, which had a, you know, a hard, uh, you know, spirited side, uh, very difficult to beat. And uh, it was at a particular important stage of the season for us where we needed a win. Uh, we'd had a couple of injuries and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get over for four tries, which, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed scoring. And, um, you know, with the absence of Tony Myler, uh, I, I thought, I, you know, I filled in uh, pretty well for him. And again, the ball comes to the short side. Rogan and Jonathan Davis has taken that one. Davis has just got Simpson to be caught. I was chasing him. A superb side step from Jonathan Davis. What a great score from Jonathan Davis. Bradley breaks the tackle and keeps the ball out. But again, it's Jonathan Davis with the interception. And again, De Jonathan Davis side step, sets him away. And he's got support with Mike McFire outside. Mike McFire takes that one. And the fire scores in the corner. Long ball out to Davis. To Coloto out in the centres. And now out to Martin McFire. The fire's cut down. Back to Davis. Jonathan Davis finds a gap in the middle and Davis is away. And he's got clear the support. He must give it. He doesn't give it. Oh, it's a good try from Jonathan Davis. Well, what can you say about the Welshman? Final tackle. And what will we see from Davis? We see a side step and Davis is going for the line. Jonathan Davis is going to get his hat stick. What a superb try. Well, we'll be singing in the Witness Club tonight. The karaoke man goes in again for his third one for Witness. And each one has been a gem. Three tries of the season today we've seen from Jonathan Davis. But Widnes now certainly piling on the pressure. Davis a little chip. And he's in. 
is in for his fourth. Well, what a superb game Jonathan Davis has had. He's certainly back to his brilliant best, four tries. Well, obviously, pace always matters. Uh, he's certainly stronger than everybody expected he was. Um, we were worried, perhaps, uh, his tackling ability, but he's proven that he can do that. He's a good all-round player. If you were still the Great Britain coach, would he be in your side as one of the first members of the team? More certainly. Paul Hume feeds and takes the ball back. Davis into the line, a superb sidestep from Davis, and Davis goes in. Superb score. The witness fullback pops up from nowhere. Yeah, you know, to make uh, to get picked for the Great Britain tour to uh, New Zealand, a lot of a lot of people said I was very fortunate to do that. But um, you know, I pr proved a lot of people wrong uh, and earned my place in in the Test side. Um, so that was a fantastic honour for me, you know, especially to go to New Zealand after uh, the Wales' disastrous tour, and then to win the Test series in New Zealand. Uh, it was a great achievement um, for the team as well as myself and. Uh, you know, it's more of, of a, you know, a dream uh, to play for Wales, but more of an achievement to play for Great Britain because a lot of people said that I'd uh, never make it in in rugby league. And then you know we came home and uh, they had a great, the Great Britain had a, a great Test series against uh, Australia during um, you know the last season, and I was fortunate enough to be a part of the squad and part of the side in the last uh, last Test. In his second full season with Widnes, Jonathan broke the all-time club record for points scored in a season with a remarkable 342. I don't really think of records, um, you know, records are purely there to be broken. And, uh, you know, but on, when I was getting really close to it, of course, media attention uh, was put on it. And, uh, you know, it was nice to break it. Uh, but then again, you know, maybe uh, you know, in, in a few years' time, that'll be broken uh, by somebody else. Jacko, 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 Jacko. The name of Jonathan Davis is now synonymous with rugby league, and he believes that the game can and will develop over the next few years. Yes, yeah, it's such a great game, and uh, I think people are becoming more aware of it purely because of uh, the speed um, of that the game is played at. And uh, you know they are promoting the game very, very well. Um, but it is a very regional game at this particular moment. But uh, with the right marketing, uh, right publicity, you know, and um, you know if the players can get a higher profile, uh, maybe the game um, could expand. You know, firstly throughout Britain, and then uh, you know into uh, other emerging nations. But uh, it's going to take a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of time. Um, the thing they've got to do is not to try and compete with uh, rugby union or you know any other sport and just worry about rugby league. And neat tip over the top for Davis to chase and it bounces up for Davis and a great inside ball. What a superb pass from Jonathan Davis. Ball went out and now Grimmer goes for the line, knocks off one, a superb ball out to Grimmer and a great run down and Jonathan Davis scores for the witness. So David Hume puts the ball in, takes it out, Sonny Myler looks and then comes Jonathan Davis into a superb gap created by Myler and Jonathan Davis has just got the full back to beat, superb sidestep and he's still going, Jonathan Davis is looking for the final, but I don't think he's going to need it, and a superb score from Jonathan Davis, the full length of the field, he took that ball off Sonny Myler on his own line, that has got to be the tie of the season. And anybody who thinks that Jonathan Davis isn't good enough to play for Great Britain can have a look at this video. And in the summer of 1991, Jonathan signed for the top Australian club, Canterbury Bankstown, known as the Bulldogs. Uh, to play in, in Australia, um, you know, has got to be one of my ambitions when I came over here. Um, I think rugby league in Australia is, uh, is, the, is the best place to play it because um, they are currently the world champions and in any sport you want to play you know where you know where the world champions play and um, you want to play on the biggest stage and for me i think sydney winfield cup uh, is the biggest stage and they've got the raiders under some pressure nissan gets it back to davis davis steps out a magnificent step from davis oh showed magnificent pace and step 
and almost straight through. It was only last line of defence that pulled him down. Now they seem, seem to set themselves to go wider. McGrady with a short ball and Davis who charged onto that beautifully. He gets outside Martin, he gets away. Stepping, magnificent. I'll let the crowd tell a story here. So Canterbury putting on the pressure again. Terry Lamb to Davis. Davis dummies. Gets out of the tackle. And another one. Davis for the line. That's the try and Canterbury hit the lead. Jonathan Davis, a beautiful solo effort. Fancy footwork, you won't see any better. Um, you know, I'm not uh, one of these knockers who have, who have a go at uh, rugby sides, but at the moment, um, I feel sorry for uh, the current Welsh side because I feel they have no confidence in uh, the administrators or, you know, because of their lack of um, consistency. Um, you know, the, the one thing uh, that's happening now is that they're trying to follow other nation's patterns, uh, like the New Zealand or the French, whereas the Welsh uh, game have, uh, you know, their own pattern and they should stick to it. Uh, they've got no game plan at the moment and, um, you know, they should um, care about their own game and not, well, not try and follow everybody else's game and just get on with it. We, we've got... Um, Pack of four is capable of winning some ball, but then we should play an expansive game and pick, um, you know, a, an open side flanker, which um, Wales have always done. Well, if they're international players, the, the responsibility of fitness should be on themselves, and 90% uh, of the players are fit when they go to squad sessions. The 10% who aren't fit should should not be involved, and uh, you know, so it's their responsibility. I think um, when they get together, they should uh, perform, you know, on. Um, patterns of play and just to uh, to get used to each other's um, skills and uh, attributes to the game. What's gone wrong with Welsh rugby? Um, I think there's a number of reasons really. You can't put your finger on, on one particular reason. Um, you know, I think one is the um, there's no rugby being played in the schools now. Uh, in my time there was uh, there were grammar schools and now they're comprehensive. When you look around, the kids don't have enough rugby these days. Um, there was an, a teacher's overtime ban a number of years ago. That's another thing um, I think um, hindered uh, Welsh rugby. Uh, another thing, the decline of the Welsh team over the last number of years, and uh, kids lose interest in it. Uh, and also, you know, um, the marketing of different sports um, like golf, American football. Uh, you know, they marketed very, very well. And uh, whereas all the administrators think that. Um, the kids, you know, in Wales will definitely play rugby union. I think they're wrong at this, uh, you know, in this era. They want to play, you know, they see their idols on television, like uh, Ian Woosnam, you know, the Ian Bothams, uh, the uh, Ian Rushes, and, uh, you know, they've got to pull the finger out and market the game properly. Uh, you've got to use international players from um, those regions to go to the schools maybe two or three times a week. It's pointless having coaching uh, administrators when uh, you know the kids can't relate to who they are or what, what they're there for. If you get an established international player there, you know, you'll attract more kids um, you know, to play the game of rugby. Having played in the inaugural Rugby Union World Cup, how does Jonathan feel Wales will fare in the forthcoming tournament? I think, you know, um, after a disappointing five, um, five Nations series, um, they've got to be just to go to the World Cup. Um, first is to um, go on to the second stage and uh, win their group, which would be very, very difficult. But uh, play the, the most thing is to play with a bit of uh, consistency and, uh, you know, a style and a pattern which the players and the spectators uh, can relate to. I think you've got to look at, um, from the European side, Northern Hemisphere, it's got to be France and, uh, and England. But uh, the biggest threat will uh, surely come from um, the Southern Hemisphere of Australia, but uh, more so the All Blacks. I think England have been lucky with a draw, you know, that uh, one thing that they won't have to um, play New Zealand after their group matches. But unfortunately, uh, the loser of that group have got to go to France in the semi-final and play in Parc de France which uh, means if France are in the semi-final, they'd be favourites to go through. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, um, you've got to go for the All Blacks purely because of their attitude, um, you know, and, and their positive thinking towards the game. I think, 
you know, people that don't come from a small community won't understand the, you know, the friendship bonds that uh, are so strong between uh, all the all the people in the village. Uh, when, my, when my dad was bad, um, you know, my mum had to go and stay in Cambridge uh, while he was having his uh, transplant, and uh, my grandmother looked after us. And of course, um, you know, my dad uh, had to finish work, and uh, money was rather scarce. So, um, you know, they uh, started, you know, getting together, and uh, the rugby club that donated some money for us, and also Swansea Rugby Club did, which helped finance my mum's stay, you know, um, in Cambridge. Jim Salon was magnificent. Everybody, you can't name anybody because the whole village got involved and helped in any way they could. His heart is in Jim Salon, it always has been, and I reckon it will always be there. He's, he looks forward very much every time he, they talk about coming home. He's looking forward to the trip down to Saran to see and meet all the boys and go down the club. Uh, I'm just one of the boys from Garden Suburbs, really. You know, I come down, uh, you know, they skit me uh, when I go in the club. Um, you know, they tell me to get my round in the same as everybody else and uh, generally take the mickey out of me. But, uh, you know, I can um, give as good as I take, so we have a good laugh. He looks at any chap with gold and silver lockets, but he's got a handicap. I'm shot down on his pocket. I'd like to come back and put something into the game, you know, but um, keep my connections in the league game as well, um, because I think I'm a far better player and, and would be a far better coach um, after being involved in both codes, uh, because um, both codes have a lot to learn from each other. Um, you know, maybe I'd like to come back, you know, after I've retired and, uh, and I'm sat in the house one day and the club rings me up from Saran and say, the second choice fullback is off with uh, a hangover or, or something. Would, uh, would you like to play? Oh!